We know Sharon loves color as evidenced by her color psychology lesson earlier in the show. And here's further proof. Ten years ago, she used a bold palette for the main floor of a home she designed. And today, she updates some elements to suit the homeowner's changing tastes. I stenciled this staircase around 10 years ago and luckily the homeowners still love it because I do too. So it's staying, but it's time to give the rest of the space a makeover. So we're going to lighten and brighten the paint palette and then we're also going to look at changing some of the furniture and accessories, giving them a little bit more storage and then really just giving the whole space a refresh. I'm so excited to show you the bold new vibe of this main floor. Now I started by painting all the walls in Benjamin Moore's moonshine and then the trim and ceilings in my favorite bright white Chantilly lace. So this is the perfect blank canvas to start layering in color, pattern and texture. Now to fuel a makeover, it always helps to have at least one piece of inspiration and for this space my friend really wanted to incorporate her grandmother's vintage chairs. So to set the stage for these awesome retro beauties is this gorgeous wallpaper mural by a Quebec designer, Manon Leblanc. It's dramatic with the supersized flowers and yet it's soft at the same time. Now to play up the eccentric feel in here, I paired it with a bold green chenille fabric on the banquette and then mixed in some patterns in the cushions and even a different pattern with the curtains. The banquette is both decorative and functional. I reinforced an inexpensive kitchen cabinet component to support for seating and it also doubles as extra storage. Now the dining table was in pretty good shape so we just gave it a fresh new coat of black paint. And to update the existing kitchen cabinets, we replaced the old hardware with some trendy new champagne bronze poles. In the living room, the furnishings are a nice neutral dark gray with various textures. Now paired with the tint of gray on the wall, there's a nice visual contrast in value, but it's really the color and pattern that bolster up the energy in this space. Now cushions and throws are always a great way to add some color play, but in this space I was invited to have fun and be bold with paint color. So. Since the homeowner has a total crush on chartreuse, I brought pops of it into the door, added a custom panel to ready-made curtains, and incorporated it into a graphic paint effect. This boxy architectural element is now a feature that visually separates the living room from the kitchen with bold strokes of paint color. Color is truly so transformative, and whether your taste is bold, like in this space, or more subtle, you can count on color to set the mood. Great makeover, Sharon. You must have had a blast in that space. So vibrant and all down to color choice. So now you're going to show us how to use color to create the mood and energy you want in a room. Yes, absolutely, Trace. I think we've talked about color psychology. Now we're going to talk about color theory in a way. We're going to look at some different color schemes. So we're going to look at complementary. We're going to look at monochromatic and how very different of a feel you can get in that space. Now, when we talked about color psychology, we talked about blue. So we know that blue is serene and calm, like the sky. It kind of sits back. It recedes. And then orange, which is the complement, which is the opposite color on the color wheel. You get the most excitement when you put those two together. So when I put orange in there, it's upbeat and playful and energetic so what happens when I put those two together in a room <laughs> that's what we're going to talk about now you get so much energy Tracy there's so much dynamism that you can get when you combine complementary colors but it can be a little daring and a little trickier to pull off because it is such a strong contrast and strong um, color combination yeah, it's almost like color blocking an outfit. You got to go in with a little bit of confidence. So give us some tips on how to do a complementary color scheme successfully. Okay, so what we're going to do when we're using two opposite colors on the color wheel, you've got to play them together really well. So you have to think about, even though they're opposites, so I've said they're opposites in the color wheel, you've got to look for those similarities. So it's kind of like opposites attract, which my husband and I always say to each other, and then you drive each other crazy. So what you got to do is look 
for those similarities. So I've got this beautiful blue, Georgian blue, Georgian Bay blue on the wall. It's a nice dark, sort of sophisticated blue. And then I've got that pop of this beautiful cognac color leather sofa. Now all of my furniture is from Mobilia and it's just absolutely perfect for the set. But really you can see how this cognac color really sings against that blue. So that's what happens. You get this sort of vibrancy. But you've got to watch those, look for those similarities. So I'm just going to show you an example with another opposite color, um, some opposite colors, purple and yellow. So when you take bright yellow or banana yellow and you put that with a grayed purple, so there's more gray in this, not as much in this, it just doesn't feel right. It kind of like vibrates in a, in a bad way. So you don't want to put those two together. That's how you know that the similar, the tones aren't similar. But when you put a more grayed yellow, like Dunmore Cream, which is an historical color that has a similar amount of gray, that's our simplistic, simplistic way of talking about tone, you kind of get this more harmonious feel. So that's what you want to do. You want to look for the similarities in tone when you're talking about your opposite colors. And actually what I always suggest to people is go to a smaller collection like the Affinity Collection and then you can get colors in there, opposites, analogous, monochromatic, and they'll all work really well together. So it's just sort of a good tip when you're looking for colors to combine. But another really important thing to keep in mind is you've got to mix up the values of those colors. So we've got this beautiful cognac, we've got that gorgeous Georgian Bay Blue, but we've got to bring in different values. So we want to bring in lighter versions of both the warm, like in the rug I've got a lot of warm tones that really help keep it grounded, and then hits of blue. And same thing in the artwork, which is really what started this whole um, set, it's got both the pinks, it's got the blues, it's got the cognac, so you really get that excitement in the artwork and I just want to take from there and bring those colors into the space. Beautiful. Now the other thing you do, and that's sort of something else you bring in to anchor the colors, is black and white. That's really important yes. because it breaks up all that color, right? It really does, Trace, and black and white is important in every space. You want to be careful with a complementary scheme that you don't bring in too much, because you've already got that contrast of the opposite colors, but little hits of it, like this beautiful terrazzo table, we've got little hits of it in some of the accessories on the legs, so that's pretty much all that you need. But one of the most important things to make a complementary scheme work is balance. So instead of 50-50 balance, you want to like tilt the scales a little bit and have more of a 60-40, or a 70-30, or even an 80-20. So you've got primarily more blue, less of the orange, or vice versa. And again, as long as you've got all those different values in there, you can, you can really pull it off. And it is daring, but it can be so dynamic and wonderful and uplifting. Okay, Sharon, we know how to use complementary colors now. What about a monochromatic scheme? I would think that might be a bit easier. And what type of energy are you creating in a room with a monochromatic palette? <laughs> All right, Trace, monochromatic is definitely naturally more calming and harmonious, no matter what color you use. Um, and you know, and, and in this case, I'm using all sorts of pinks, so mm -hmm. tints and shades. So I've gone for the lightest, the darkest. But the risk with using a monochromatic palette, even though it is a little bit easier to pick one color, is for it to be flat and boring. So there's a few things that are really important that you have to keep in mind with this. And one of the most important things is varying the textures. We talk a lot about textures when we're talking about grays and white on white, really, really important in any monochromatic scheme. So I've got some beautiful, thick textured wools. I've got a patinaed wood that's in sort of calming um, tones as well, but you're picking it up with lots of linens and, and, uh, and cozy materials. And then, of course, some smooth finishes. So you definitely need to bring in those textures. And then you want to think, again, just like in complementary, you want to think about varying the values. So you want to go from the lightest, lightest, the lightest pinks up to the darkest pinks. And then, again, think about expanding that the horizon with the color, right? So even browns, you can bring in some woods and they kind of still feel very pinky and pinky toned. But you can see what I did on the wall that really helps you to combine different values of colors. I've taken a light pink head over heels and then on the bottom I've used Chippendale rose tone. So you kind of get those two tones in a fun, organic way. I think it's so beautiful. And you know, that paint treatment you've done is the thing that keeps it from being boring at all. So texture, that paint right. treatment, just beautiful. And is yes. that just a line of paint in between those two different pinks? 
that's just a line of pink, just a line of cloud white. So you kind of get that imperfect line, which is awesome. And it's also really important because you look at all the details with monochromatic, you want to bring in some really interesting shapes and forms. So that was a great way to start. But you see it got lots of rounded um, materials, lots of rounded forms, and again, with even following it through into the wood. So you want to think about all of those details and just carry them through and maybe even exaggerate them for monochromatic and you can still create this beautiful harmonious feel. Sharon, such great lessons. I mean, you know your stuff. So thank you for chatting with us about color uh, so extensively.